Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Today I'd like to share with you some of the techniques that will allow you to make two, four, eight, or a hundred spindle turnings look alike. It isn't all that hard to do. About three weeks ago, I had two friends come into the shop and we built reproductions of spinning wheels that were built around 1900 in Brantford, Ontario. For the wheels, which were 46 inches in diameter, we had to make 10 identical spokes. Not only did they have to look alike, they had to weigh pretty much the same amount or the wheel will have dead spots in it. I'd like to show you how I made those 10 spindles clones of each other. I started with accurately milled blanks that I jointed on two faces and ripped to inch and a half squares in a table saw with a sharp carbide blade. I then cross cut the blanks to exactly 22 inches long. To start the turning process, all I have to do is turn this piece just around and I will have the inch and a half diameter that is at the top of this spindle. So without further ado, I'll start up my lathe and turn this baby around. I'm getting close to round. I'm going to put my hand here now and just feeling with my fingers. I'm lightly touching the work. Perfect. I'll now use a skew chisel to make this area really smooth. I have three sets of dividers here that give me all the information I need to lay out the top of this spindle. This is the distance of the head that gives the wheel inertia. Here is the distance between the two half beads. And finally, here is the width of each half bit bead, which also tells me the size of this cove. Starting with the largest pair, I step that distance off first. And then I step off the distance between the two half beads. And now I take the smaller pair and step that off. I also have a pair of calipers that are set to the depth of that cove. A little less than the depth, actually. I'll now take a spindle gouge and quickly turn that cove to just a bit deeper than I cut with a parting tool. Now I'll take my skew chisel and cut a V groove down in there. That'll be the root of that half bead. Again, back to our spindle gouge. We just roll a real nice half bead there. And I'll do the mirror image right here. Now I have another set of calipers that are set to this diameter of the top of the shaft. And again, using a beading and parting tool or a parting tool doesn't matter. There we are. I just start removing material here. Our next job is to size this half inch diameter by half inch long tenon. And they need to all be the exact same length and to fit snugly into the hub. If they are of different lengths, the wheel won't be round. So I have a set of dividers that I put down right here and scratch a little line there that tells me the half inch distance. And I'll use a beading and parting tool to quickly size that tenon at the precise length. And I'll use a half inch wrench right here 
And when that drops over it, I know I have a tight fit with a half inch drilled hole. Put just a little chamfer there so it'll start nice. Now all I have to turn is this down to about a 1 16th shoulder. And I'll turn the taper of the actual spindle by eye. I am going to use a skew now. I'm going to deepen this root of this bead just a little. Because this spindle actually curves back down in for a small distance right here. Coming down through there with a skew. I'm in a heel cut now. Now's the time if you can use a skew well that this will just plane this right down into a a great taper right down through here. We have one last little detail to put in, which we're just gonna touch this half inch set of dividers and take a scraper and scrape just a little decorative groove, two of them, right there and right there. And there we are. There's our finished spindle. I'll sand that starting with 220 grit sandpaper and put some finish on it. Be all set to go. The main thing is that we have two spindles that look alike here and we can turn as many more as we wish.